Shalom to all my brothers and sisters. Thank you so much for coming to this video. Today, I'm going to be teaching how you can prove to anyone, anyone who comes up to you and tells you, the Torah is not from God. Somebody made it up. There's a lot of atheists in the world. There's a lot of people that will de deny the revelation at Sinai. How do you prove that Elohim spoke to our ancestors at Mount Sinai? Now, I hope this video will be helpful, and um, I hope it will be enlightening to remember this. We can actually prove that the Torah has to be from God and there's no way around it. There's no disproving the Torah. So I hope that at the end of this video you'll understand why I say this confidently that nobody can disprove the Torah was not from God. So I hope you enjoy it. I hope this will be helpful in any kind of conversation you might come up with or someone who argues against you. And I want to state before we begin Every university, every school university, especially in the United States, the university professors are teaching that no, the Torah is not from God. It's just like every other religion. Somebody made it up. It's a lie right off the bat. They teach what's called past theory. What they're basically saying is that some cult leader came to a bunch of people, the nation, and said a long time ago, your ancestors heard God speak at the foot of Mount Sinai, and Moses was there, all your family. But it was lost. The tradition was lost for many centuries. So don't bother asking your parents or your grandparents, because they won't know anything about it. The other is the present theory, which many do not teach this. But some will try to teach this, that in the present lie... Let's just say Moses comes to the people and says, you all, now remember, this is a lie. Moses tells all the nation, you all heard God speak. Okay? Past and present lie. One of the two. Now, the main lie that's taught is the, the past lie. That's what the universities are teaching. Someone made it up, a cult leader. Okay? That being said, the claim that the whole nation of approximately 3 million men, women, and children, when you do your math, all heard God speak, and that's in every single Torah scroll on earth, without question. Every Torah scroll, the Hebrew is clear. The whole nation heard God speak. That's what every Torah scroll says. The claim is either true or false. If it is a lie, and no such revelation ever took place, at some time in the past, someone must have made that claim up. If we contemplate what the scene must have looked like when a false claim of national revelation or national prophecy was first launched, we find ourselves locked into one of two scenarios. The person making the claim either told his followers, A, that the national Revelation happened in the present, meaning you all heard God speak. And here's the Torah. Or B, the national revelation happened in the past, like I mentioned before. Your ancestors once heard God speak. We might call the first theory Moses. The Moses theory, since the Torah records that Moses was the name of Israel's leader. When the prophecy took place. We can call B, or the second possibility, the Fred theory. Quote, unquote, the Fred theory. The, the one, the cult leader who made this up. Okay? Since the leader during this post, like after the Sinai event, period, need not be Moses. He might as well be Fred because this is some liar coming and saying, Long ago, Moses and your ancestors heard God speak. But don't bother telling your parents or your grandparents because it was lost long ago for many, many hundreds of years until I, the liar, Fred, have come to quote-unquote relaunch this Israelite belief. Now this is what all the universities are teaching. According to the Moses theory, ancient Israel's leader told a foolish lie. Why is it foolish? Because the lie is this. You all heard God. Remember, it's a lie. He lied about this event, and he said, you all heard God speak. You personally heard God speak. And he said these words, basically, 
Anochi Yehoah Lohecha. I am Yehoah, your Elohim, who brought you out of Egypt, the Ten Commandments. All of you heard it. We can imagine the scene as people first examined the supposedly divine Torah and their charismatic leader tried to explain to Israel some of the text's more unpleasant rituals like circumcision. Don't worry, the God that you all heard speaking told you to get circumcised. They would think he was out of his mind. Yes, use a very sharp knife and a quick downward motion, and it was the God whom you heard speak who told me you should do this. People would probably know if they had heard God speak. There's no question about it. They would know. And if they hadn't heard God speak, they might be a little hesitant to accept the Torah's validity. They'd be like, this guy's crazy. I never heard God speak. I was in the other room making rice or making some other thing. I never heard anything. It would just fall apart, point blank. You can't make up a lie in the present and say, you all heard God speak if it's a lie. Because people won't accept a checkable lie. If I tell you, you all heard, you personally, you heard God speak, you'll say, no, I did not hear God speak. And you didn't hear God speak either because you're saying that you heard him with me. I didn't hear God speak. Game over. Doesn't work. So, most religions in the world, all religions, apart from the Israelite faith, all religions begin with a lie that cannot be checked. Period. One person making a claim that they had a revelation or a vision or a dream and no one else had that vision. It's trust me, trust me, God spoke to me. Can you prove it? No. But this is the most checkable lie of all. You all heard God speak. It wouldn't work. So the present lie cannot work, period. This is why all universities say it was a cult leader who made up a lie of something that happened long ago and it was lost until this liar had to relaunch the religion. Okay? When would Fred claim the national revelation took place? If he said it happened recently to his followers' parents, grandparents, or great-grandparents, that means us, Israel, and our ancestors, as we all declare, our ancestors heard God speak. That's what every Jew says. Our ancestors were there. There's an unbroken chain going back to Sinai. Period. So, the lie would, have, would be checked. If he says, your grandparents heard God speak, they would say, we never heard about that. That's the biggest event in history. That would be the biggest thing in history. There's no way you can lie about that. So, he would have to say that it happened long, long ago. Way to a time that is beyond uncheckable. That's what he would have to do. Maybe 500 or 1,000 years earlier. Could be that. But I'm just trying to get you to understand. You have to set the lie way back. 500, 1,000 years. Something like that. This is a smart lie insofar as it can't be checked. Followers would understand why they have no memory of a tradition. Specifically, supposedly lost hundreds of thousands of years before. However, followers would reasonably wonder how Fred himself recalls this otherwise forgotten tradition. Fred could explain things, again, a smart, uncheckable lie, he would say, claiming that God spoke to him alone and revealed the Torah's long-lost text and the Torah, or the story of its origin, the revelation at Mount Sinai. Indeed, most modern skeptics gravitate towards a theory like this. Some cult leader made it up. Okay? Here's the problems with these theories. The major problem with this theory is we've never heard of this Fred or cult leader. Now think about this. The liar does not exist. So this is what I'm saying is, if somebody says to you, the Torah was not from God. It was made up. All you have to say to them is, well, who made up the Torah? Who is the cult leader who started this Israelite faith that you claim is a lie? Who was it? What is the point I'm trying to say? There is no cult leader. 
Now, in every religion, now you have to really think about this. In every religion, everybody knows who started their faith, true or false. The Mormons would be Joseph Smith, Islam, Muhammad, Christianity. Many would say Paul or Jesus or so on and so forth. All the faiths. Buddha had the vision alone under a tree. On and on and on and on. Everybody knows who started the religion or the belief, whatever you want to call it. But if you're specifically talking about the Torah, the event at Mount Sinai when God spoke to the entire nation of Israel, and somebody wants to say, somebody made it up. It was made up by one liar. Well, who is the liar? Who is the cult leader? If they're an idiot, they might say, it was Moses. Moses made it up. Again, it does not work. Because what does the Torah say over and over and over again? Not that God spoke to Moses. It says God spoke to the entire nation. Exodus chapter 19 verse 9. I will come to you in a thick cloud so that all the people will hear when I speak to you. And in chapter 19 it says, And Moses took the nation to meet God. And they took their place at the foot of the mountain. They all saw the thunder and the lightning, the rumbling of the mountain and the fire. God ascending down onto Mount Sinai. They all witnessed it. And they all heard the word that Elohim spoke, the Ten Commandments. Anochi Yehoah Aloheka. I am Yehoah, your Elohim, who brought you to the land of Egypt, this house of slaves. You shall have no other gods upon my face. So on and so forth. They all heard it. So there is no cult leader. And most importantly, if you look at all Jewish history, going back nonstop, there is no record of any gap where the tradition was lost or the remembrance of the event at Mount Sinai was lost. Ever. Now, our history goes all the way back to Moses at Mount Sinai. Real Israelites, okay? Non-stop. There's not a single record. We have all the records going all the way back. 3,400 plus years. Non-stop. From our ancestors to the biblical record, there is no such history of a gap. And most importantly, no Fred. It doesn't exist. And finally, in the Torah, in chapter 4 of Deuteronomy, of Devarim chapter 4, the Torah makes the most amazing prediction in verse 32 of chapter 4 of Devarim, Deuteronomy. It states there, Ask yourselves, look back at all times gone by, from the beginning of creation, from the ends of the earth, until today. Has there ever been another nation who has ever heard the voice of God as you all have heard and lived to tell? Has any God ever taken a nation out of another nation through wonders and miracles? No. No. Only once in history. Now what's so significant about, significant about that last point? Because if when this Torah was written 3,400 plus years ago, if someone came along, imagine if this book is a lie, period, and it says there, this is a one-time event, that's what I'm trying to tell you, the Torah says this will never happen again, only once. So if, if any religion or cult leader or group of people, even 50 people, 100 people, it doesn't exist, doesn't exist. Not even 20 people. God speak, spoke to 10 people. Never thought of that. Nope. Not a single claim. Because if you ever heard of a claim where God spoke to a bunch of people, 10, 20, 30, 100 people, you could take the Torah and you could throw it in the garbage. Because you'll know that the Torah is not from God. That's why the Torah is unique in the world. The Torah cannot be disproven. It is from God. It was revealed to the entire nation. If somebody says it was made up, all you have to say is, who made it up? 
Can you name the cult leader? Can you name the liar? If you wait from today till next year, you'll never get an answer. Where's the history of the gap? Nowhere. The Torah stands alone. The Torah is the words of Elohim, the Most High. Blessed be his name. Blessed be Yehoah for all generations and all eternity. Amen.